After I posted a video last week about me trimming my own beard, I got a lot of really great feedback from people saying how much they enjoyed all the tips and tricks. But a lot of people had questions about different beard shapes. You want it? You got it. Today I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks that you need to be able to create for yourself a nice short beard shape on one of my favorite clients here at my shop at Victory Gastown. Let's get into it. My name is Matty Conrad. I've been a professional barber for over 27 years, and in that time, I've built a number of barber shops and started a brand called Victory Barber and Brand. I spent most of my time traveling around the world teaching other barbers all my tips and tricks on how they can be better barbers. Now, I've been featured in a number of magazines, but more recently, I've been showing up as a grooming expert on GQ's YouTube page. Collectively, that series has over 25 million views. So that inspired me to start my own YouTube page so I could answer some of your most burning questions and share with you guys my best tips and tricks to take your grooming to the next level. So here they are. All right, welcome back to Victory Gastown. And you remember my buddy Ravash. Of course you do. Great beard for this sort of thing. He wears it short, likes it faded, so he's going to be a great model for today. Step one, reset the beard with a hot towel. The first thing you should do is just reset the beard by putting a hot towel on it. Now, in a lot of my beard videos, you've seen that I wash my beard ahead of time. If you don't have the time for that, just running a hot towel underwater and wrapping around your face for about 60 seconds should do the trick. Yeah, this, this is gonna get boring to watch. So why don't we talk about the tools that we're gonna use today? I'm gonna be working with an electric clipper that has an adjustable lever. I'm gonna be working with a trimmer, a shaver, an assortment of guards from one half to two, my Victory Barber and Brand texture paste, and a comb and a pick. So after about 60 seconds, you can remove the hot towel, your beard should be back to its natural state, and we can get started. Step two, detangle. Now, first thing I'm going to tell you to do is go through it with a pick and just get the tangles out and try and comb it into the nicest shape possible. Don't puff it all straight out to the sides and make it all crazy. It looks like Ravash has been trimming his own neckline because that is definitely not level. So let's get started with the baseline. I'm going to take my clipper. I'm going to set a line here that is, well, not quite too steep. I want something that's nice and flat across the bottom. So something like this. And I'm just going to take the hair below that line and clean it into a nice straight panel. Now this is the area that I call the shelf. A lot of you have seen some of my beard trimming videos before and this is the bottom part. On a short beard, I like to set a really strong baseline and then clean everything up from there. So that's where we're going to start today. Just take your clipper, invert it and create as nice, clean and smooth a panel as you can along the bottom. And make it look nice and clean. Now I'm gonna switch sides and you can see I have to take just a little bit more off this side to make it look level. Just continue on and make things nice and even on both sides, using your clipper inverted still to make that clean panel along the bottom. Now I'm just going to clean up all the hair on the neck and I like to do this along the way so I can see the line a little better. I know from this angle it doesn't look great but it is going to look a lot better once we refine it. You don't need to get it perfect with your clipper it is really just to rough that shape in. Like Ravash I'm sure a lot of you probably have hair right at your neckline there that grows more across than straight down. The real trick here is just to comb the hair down and lay it against the neck and then use the clipper without putting any tension on the hair. You don't want to hold it down with a comb. You just want to coax it into a nice shape and then be patient and use your clipper to make your nice clean line. As soon as you put too much tension on the neck, the hair has a tendency to rebound and then you're going to lose your shape. Step four, freehand shaping. So now I'm going to go and do just a little bit of freehand. This is the area where I want you to clean up the flyaways around the chin. I don't want you to go inwards and roll around in with the chin. I just want you to push straight down. And this is going to give you a little bit more of a squared out shape to the beard. It's going to make sure it doesn't push too far forward. It's going to get rid of all of the little flyaways. Step five. 
here you're really just trying to smooth it out a little bit and get rid of all the hairs that are sticking out. You're not usually looking to change the shape too dramatically. It's time for step five, fading the beard. Now, before we get too far, there's a couple of terms that barbers use that I think a lot of people misunderstand, and I want to explain what they mean. The first term is fade. Now, when we're referring to a haircut as a fade, it is a haircut that goes all the way down to the skin, and there's no obvious outline left in place around the ear. The second term we're going to talk about is taper. And a taper is a haircut that still goes all the way down to the skin, but usually only in the temple or the nape area and still leaves an obvious outline around the ear. When it comes down to beards, when we're talking about the difference between a tapered beard and a faded beard, we're really talking about the volume of hair that is removed inside the cheeks. Uh, a beard can be tapered up in this zone here, which is usually from about the earlobe upwards. But when we're talking about a beard fade, a fade usually goes down a little lower and creates a line more like this. So basically the difference is, is that a taper will be a much shorter, more compressed area where the length is removed slowly until it reaches down to either close to the skin or all the way to the skin. And a fade will be a much more stretched out area. Fading a beard is something that is typically only done in shorter beards because it removes so much growth area and makes it look very, very lean and tight. Whereas on a fuller beard, you might want to opt for more of a taper and only remove the hair down in this area. If you have a hairstyle that is not faded all the way down to the skin, I highly suggest just blending it into the haircut and not removing or tapering it all the way down to the skin. But if you have a faded hairstyle here like Ravash does, it is a great option. It looks a lot cleaner and there's something kind of weird about a fade and a beard that just comes to an abrupt stop. So we're gonna start by grabbing our clipper and attaching our number two guard. This is where I like to start my fades. We're gonna imagine a line comes across there and that's essentially where I'm gonna start removing the bulk of the hair. To do that, I'm gonna angle my clipper along that same axis and I'm gonna put it right against the skin and push upwards away from the jaw. I wanna get everything in that area uniform and once that's done, you can see there's a bit of a heavy line at the bottom. So turn your clipper inverted and we're gonna work downwards now with the grain of the beard. And I'm gonna use what's called a reverse C-stroke, which is just a way of scooping away from the jawline so I can blend that area out. All right, now it's time to move down a guard and we're gonna pick a one and a half for this. And I'm gonna move that line up about a quarter of an inch. So now I only wanna be working above the new line. This is how we kind of move the shape upwards and start to get it slightly shorter. As the hair gets shorter, any difference in length becomes a lot more noticeable. So take your time in this area and really make sure that you're going over it and being very thorough. Now it's time to transition to the one guard. Work slightly higher still. You should be somewhere around the earlobe and above. At this point, you probably noticed that I'm using a brush and that is a really good tool to have to make sure that you get everything nice and uniform. It really helps the hair lay down and feed cleanly into the clipper. As they say, brushing is blending. Then you can put on your half guard and work a little higher still. By now you should start to see the hair lightening up as you take it shorter and shorter. After you're done with your half guard, you can remove your guards altogether and you can just take the clipper and start blending out the area at the top near the sideburn. And at this point, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna have a look and make sure I got everything nice and smooth. And I can see I got a little bit of a shadow in the cheek there, so I'm gonna go back with my one guard and I'm gonna try and remove it. All right, that's looking much better. But you'll probably notice that there's still enough stubble there that you're gonna need one more tool to be able to fade it down all the way. To remove the shadow at the top, you're gonna to take your trimmer and you're gonna use a reverse C-stroke with the trimmer in its natural upright position rather than inverted. 
You're just gonna push that down slightly over top of that line and it should help you blend that out entirely. Well, that's looking pretty good. So why don't we move to the other side? I'll start with the soft line set with my number two guard. And I'm just gonna work above that line really thorough, making sure all the hair gets set to my desired length. And after that, I'm gonna turn my clipper over and I'm gonna do my little reverse C stroke, which is scooping away from the beard shape, trying to blend that line out. completely I still want to leave a bit of a shadow there I just like the way it looks so we'll grab our 1.5 guard and we're gonna continue up a little bit higher here still working into the grain of the hair make sure we're really nice and thorough in this area always working upwards you can see I keep pushing up away from that line Now it's time to grab our one guard. You can see I've got my one guard. Our last guard was 1.5, so now we're working at a one. And pushing up above this line here, which is just above the earlobe, making sure that gets really nice and uniform. And it's starting to get a little bit lighter. All right, grab the half guard. And you can see a little closer here, we're just gonna be working above the earlobe in this area. We're really gonna be trying to take that down nice and tight. You can see my clipper's closed, so it's set to one half. Now I'm gonna remove my guards. With my clipper open, I'm just gonna go over that same section, just make sure it's nice and uniform. And then I'm gonna close my clipper down really tight and get as short as I can right up in the temple area. You can see we've still got that little shadow, even though we're super tight with our clipper and that little shadow is what we need to remove with our trimmer. Give that a little brush, remove whatever isn't attached, make sure it's all blended out. And now it's time for the trimmer. We're gonna do that reverse C stroke. So you can see I'm gonna start by just taking the corner off that little top there, get that a little closer. And then I'm gonna work downwards just like this, just pulling away slightly as I work downwards, I'll apply a little bit of tension to the skin and do that downward C stroking motion and that is gonna help me blend out that line. You can see that's all gone. Step six, outline. The outline is really what brings the entire thing together. So we're just gonna take a nice sharp trimmer, inverted, and we're gonna set that line from the corner of the jaw down towards the top of the Adam's apple. I really just wanna clean up anything that's hanging down, making this line look nice and crisp. Then you're gonna take your back line and set it vertical so that it comes down to a nice strong corner, amplifying the shape of the jaw. Turn your trimmer to its natural cutting position and use it to shave the hair on the neck right down to a microfine stubble. This is a good way to prep for any kind of shaving or any kind of electric foil that you wanna to use to remove the hair all the way down to the skin. The reason we do this is to avoid irritation when you're shaving. Having shorter hair to shave off creates less irritation. And when it comes to feeding hair into a foil, it already needs to be at a very fine stubble for that tool to be effective. I'm using the Stylecraft Sabre again for this video. Uh, those of you that watched my last video remember that they sent me this a couple of weeks ago. And I do really like it. All right, so now it's time to set the top line. And that's a curved line that descends from the corner of the sideburn towards the corner of the mouth. Here's my trick to do this. You can take your thumb, place it on the cheekbone and pinch the skin upwards and then set your line with your trimmer inverted, a nice straight line from the corner of the sideburn right towards the corner of the mouth. Now, when you've got the skin under tension, really take your time to perfect this line, make it as clean as you can. Once we release the skin, you're gonna notice that a perfect curved line pops out, just like that. Okay, all right, that looks much better. And now I'm just gonna clean up the top of the mustache as well. Some guys have those hairs that grow upwards. If that is you, just go with the uh, trimmer again, just like this. 
punch that nice little clean line in. A lot of the time I, I start with the clipper resting against the skin and just push down slightly. That looks much better. Now we're going to set the lip line. The lip line should follow the natural shape of the lip and should peak slightly in the center and elongate just a little bit towards the outside. Take special care to make sure that you don't go above the lip line and expose too much of the upper lip of the mouth, especially if you like to wear a heavier mustache. Take some time and use just the corner of your clipper to clean out those annoying little hairs that always seem to get right into the corner of your mouth. That's looking much better. All right, let's show you again on the other side. I'm just gonna take my line on top. I want my curved line from the corner of the mouth to the corner of the sideburn. Apply the tension, and then I'm gonna take the trimmer and I'm gonna push down into the hair, and I'm gonna make that nice, clean, straight line from the corner of the sideburn right towards the corner of the mouth. Take my time and make sure I get it as clean and perfect as I can. If that takes a couple passes, or if that just takes a little bit of adjustment time, that's okay. I'm gonna keep that tension the whole time. Then when I release it, you're gonna have a nice curved line. Now I'm gonna take my trimmer and I'm just gonna remove the hair on the cheeks again, right down to stubble, prepping it for my electric razor. All right. Let's see if we can clean the mustache from a different view here. I've got my trimmer angled downwards. It's not flat, it's angled down to mimic the shape that I want that mustache to be. And I'm just pressing down very slightly just to take the top row of hair out, just to make sure it's a nice clean line. And then I'm gonna go through and set my lip line, make sure it's nice and clean. Let's remove all the shrapnel with a brush and see what we have left attached. I think it's looking much better. All right, step seven, shaving. Now I'm gonna use an electric foil shaver for this. Uh, you're very welcome to use a safety razor or a straight razor if you feel confident with it. That really doesn't matter what you use to get it down to the skin, as long as it's something that you feel confident using. I like to use the electric foils because, well, they're a little bit more accessible. A lot of the time, uh, people at home don't feel necessarily comfortable with a straight razor. Uh, some guys like to shave, some guys don't, and this is something that everyone can use. And in fact, the technology on these has gotten so much better in the last few years. You're actually able to get unbelievably close with these things now. So whenever I'm in the shop, I usually finish off my work with this. It's easier for me to clean, it's easy for me to be able to sanitize and use it on every client, make sure that I don't get any irritation or razor bumps. This is really gonna help the beard pop. It's gonna make it stand out. It's even gonna make it look a little bit thicker. All right, that is looking a lot better to me. I'm gonna take my blow dryer and my brush and just remove anything that isn't attached. Sometimes just getting all the extra shrapnel off is a really good idea to see what it is that's left behind. Um, just especially when it comes down to trying to get your blend right, you really do wanna make sure that you're going after hair that is attached, not just chasing down hairs that are stuck to the skin. So I like to remove all those and then I'm gonna take a straight bristle brush. Now he's got a short wiry beard. So a, a natural bristle brush is a really, really great way to just get everything to smooth down, get all the hair laying in the right direction. I, I prefer it to a comb. I think it's a great way to groom. It also helps move natural oils around. You'll see I'm directing the airflow down and just using my brush to get all the flyaways to lay down. Step eight, polishing. Now, polishing is something that I usually do with a pair of scissors. I like to go and find all of the little flyaways that aren't gonna lie down with a brush and a blow dryer. This is my chance to really zero in on just those few hairs that are kind of making the shape look a little less than perfect. So I just take a few minutes to go over this, usually not more than 60 seconds, but I work around the outside of the beard shape and just remove anything that's sticking out and doesn't want to play ball. A lot of people ask me if there are good beard grooming or styling products out there. And I always tell them that my favorite is Victory Barber and Brand Super Dry. This is a really great product for finishing off beards. It is an oil-free matte texture paste. And what that means is it's not gonna have any shine. It's not gonna have any kind of greasy look to it or additional weight. It really does just create a nice natural looking control for the beard, holds down flyaways, 
and is a great way to finish off beards at any length. I even use it in my own, which is a little longer than what Ravash has here, and I absolutely love it. Now, you can't tell from the look on his face, but I think he likes it. There it is, guys, a short, faded beard style, step by step. Hopefully those tips were helpful for you guys today. There's lots of other great beard grooming advice on my channel here on YouTube. Make sure you go and check out my other videos. Hit like and subscribe and get those notifications for every time I drop a new video. And leave comments below. Who knows? Maybe next time I'll be answering your questions. So until then, good luck and good grooming.